Welcome to this video on how to use AWS Cloud Development Kit to deploy serverless REST APIs using AWS Lambda and API Gateway. My name is Philip Piddle and I'm a senior software engineer at AWS on the .NET SDK team. The Cloud Development Kit, or CDK, allows you to define your infrastructure as code in one of several programming languages, including C-sharp. This means we can use all of the tools software developers are already familiar with when defining our cloud infrastructure. Today, we'll quickly go over what you need to get started using the CDK. Then we'll create a solution with two serverless Lambda functions. And then we'll write the CDK code to deploy them and create an API gateway to allow them to be called from anywhere on the web. And as .NET 5 support in Lambda launched recently via container images, we'll create a third Lambda and matching infrastructure code. Finally, we'll use the CDK tooling to deploy our entire solution globally by using AWS regions in both the US and Europe. We'll be starting today in PowerShell. The first thing we need to do is make sure that you have Node.js installed, as this is a prereq for the CDK. If you don't have Node, you can download it from nodejs.org. Next, I'll use Node's package manager, npm, to install the CDK command line tooling, making sure to use the dash g switch so that I can run the CDK commands from any shell. Next, we'll be using the AWS CLI. If you don't have it installed, you can download it from awsamazoncom CLI. We'll use the AWS configure command to set the credentials and default region that the CDK will use. This requires you to have a user available in your AWS IAM console that has programmatic access. If you need any help getting that set up, the AWS CDK Workshop has an excellent guide. Lastly, we'll need Docker installed and running to support the .NET 5 Lambda function we'll create. If you need Docker, you can download it from docker.com. We also need to make sure we have Docker configured to use Linux containers. With all the prereqs out of the way, we can start building our application. I'll start by creating a new directory for our solution. Then we'll use the CDK command to scaffold up a solution for us. It's possible to do this step by hand, but it's much easier to let the tooling create it for you. Here we can see the files that the CDK initialized tool created for us. Inside the source directory, we'll find the solution file. Let's go ahead and open it. There's a single project inside the solution. This project contains the initial CDK infrastructure code. Let's quickly make sure the solution builds. The CDK tool creates an important file called the CDK.json file. By default, it's not added to the solution. While not necessary, I like to add it to the solution to make it easier to work with inside of Studio, so let's do that now. We'll find it at the root directory where we ran CDK init, one directory above the source folder. This is the CDK.json file. It provides configuration to the CDK tooling. We're going to ignore the feature flags listed under the context element, but we'll work with app on line 2 a bit later. This is the setting that tells the CDK runtime which command to run in order to invoke our CDK code. Now let's create some Lambda services. I've already installed the AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio, so when I go to add a new project, there will be several AWS project templates installed. Because we're going to want to use API Gateway later, I'm going to pick the AWS Serverless template. And I'm going to call this Foo Lambda. And the empty application will be just fine for our simple service. Let's open up the function and make a minor tweak. I'm going to change it to return foo and the current time so we can tell it apart from the next service that we're going to create in a second. Now that we have foo, let's create bar. I'll use the AWS serverless project template again. And we'll call this bar lambda. We'll make the same change to the bar function. We'll have it return bar and the current time in UTC. Now before we move on, let's make sure everything still builds. As we get ready to write our CDK infrastructure code, I actually want to clean up this project a bit. By default, the CDK scaffolding will name everything after the containing folder. I'll simplify this here and rename everything to just CDK, starting with the assembly and default namespace. Then I'll rename the project itself. Since that changes the file name of the csproj, we'll need to update the cdk.json file so the CDK tooling will know how to find our project. Now I'm ready to rename the stack class. 
This is where we'll define the infrastructure to host our Lambda functions, so I want to give it a better name. Let's rename it to Foobar Lambda Stack. Oh, and we'll also fix the namespace since we changed it. Now we are ready to start writing our infrastructure code. We are going to update the Foobar Lambda Stack constructor to declare that we have two Lambda functions. To do that, I'll first need to go to the NuGet package manager and add a reference to the amazon.cdk.aws.lambda NuGet package. Now that that's installed, we can start. I'm going to declare a new object, and that's going to be of type amazon.cdk.aws.lambda.function. This is going to be part of the stack, so I need to pass this as a constructor parameter. I'll give it an ID, foo lambda. This is how it will appear in CloudFormation, though we won't need to worry about that today. And then we need to customize the deployment with function props. We need to set a runtime. In this case, it's going to be .NET Core 3.1. Then we need to tell the CDK how it can find our published code by providing a path. And this path is relative to the CDK.json file. So we'll be in source slash foo lambda slash bin slash debug slash .NET Core app 3.1 slash publish. Finally, we need to specify our handler method. It's in the foo lambda assembly, and the type is foo lambda dot functions, and the method is get. So I'm going to add that as a comment real quick so you can see it. All right, add a semicolon, and that's it for foo lambda. Now I'm going to duplicate this whole statement for bar lambda. All we need to do is change the foos to bar, and we're all set. Actually, there's a small problem with the paths in from asset. They shouldn't start with a forward slash. So let's go ahead and remove those now. Now let's head back to the terminal. The first thing we need to do is run .NET publish on our solution. This isn't necessary for every construct in the CDK, but we do need to do it here because our Lambda function constructs are explicitly looking for our code in that publish directory. Next, I'm going to run CDK Bootstrap. This only needs to be run once per region. The CDK needs some AWS resources in order to function correctly, and this command sets that up for us. With that out of the way, we now have all the pieces in place to deploy to AWS. We'll do that by running CDK Deploy. This will display a list of security changes we're about to make. The function constructs we're using need to create a new IAM role for bar lambda and foo lambda, and that's what's shown here. We'll press Y to agree, and that kicks off our deployment. I've sped this up a bit, but in about a minute, our foo and bar lambda functions are provisioned out in AWS. Switching over now to the AWS console, and I've already got my browser on the lambda page in the Oregon region, and if I refresh, we'll see the newly deployed lambda functions. So now that these are up, we'll create API gateway endpoints so that we can invoke the Lambda functions over the web. First thing, we'll head back to the NuGet package manager to get the package for API gateway, which is amazon.cdk.aws.api gateway. Once that finishes installing, we're going to add more code to our foobar Lambda stack. I'll start by adding a using statement for amazon.cdk.aws.api gateway. Then we're going to use the Lambda REST API construct, so I'll new that up, pass it a reference to our stack, give it an ID. And again, we'll configure it using a props object. In this case, we need to set a property handler. What's really great here is we can pass in a reference to our foo lambda function. And that's it for foo lambda. We'll duplicate that statement for bar lambda. Change the ID and point to bar lambda, and we're done. Save the file, and let's head to the terminal. Once again, we'll run the .NET publish command because our Lambda construct is looking for the bits to be in that publish directory. Then we run the CDK deploy command. The tooling helpfully points out it needs to make IAM policy changes, and we'll confirm that that's OK. And with that, there goes our deployment. Now, I've sped this up, but it's still relatively quick. There's two things I want to highlight here. First, this time around, we can see that we deployed a significant amount of infrastructure with just a little bit of code change. 
the CDK translated the Lambda REST API construct we just added into about 20 more cloud formation steps. The second thing is our output has changed. Now we have the REST API HTTP endpoints for our two Lambda functions. In fact, I'm going to select the bar endpoint, then I'll use the invoke web request commandlet, or IWR, and I'm going to ping that endpoint. And there we go, a 200. And we can see in the content block, there's our bar output. And for completeness, let's grab the foo endpoint and we'll make the request there too. And again, there's our 200. And looking at the content block, there's our foo output. Very, very cool. So we just deployed our serverless functions to AWS using nothing but C Sharp and the CDK deploy command. Let's head back to Visual Studio because I want to create one more Lambda function. The functions we've created so far today have all been using .NET Core 3.1. But .NET 5 was recently released, so let's create a new Lambda function that targets that. We'll use the AWS serverless application project template, give our new project a name, and this time I'm going to select the .NET 5 container image blueprint. Like our other Lambda functions, I'll modify the response body so we can tell them apart. With that, let's go write our CDK code. Like before, I'm going to create a variable for the .NET 5 Lambda of type function, and we'll build it the same way. Pass in this give it an ID, and new up a function props object. But this is where we'll have to make a few changes. .NET 5 is only supported via a container image, so for runtime, we'll select from image. For the code property, we'll use from asset image, and we'll point to the directory containing the Docker file. Again, this is relative to the cdk.json file. And we'll need to pass in an asset image code props. This is a key difference because we'll use the command property to specify our handler function. And this also follows the assembly type method format from before. Finally, we will set the handler property, but we'll just set it to from image. Now the API gateway code is identical. I'll just copy it from above, change out the ID, and set the handler to .NET 5 Lambda, and we're good to go. But before we can deploy, we'll need to make a small tweak to the Docker file to point to the correct publish directory. I'm building in debug mode, so I'll switch that. And we're on a Windows machine, so the default directory is just publish. With that, back to the terminal. We'll run CDK deploy again and agree to the IAM roles. Now, what's interesting this time around is you'll see that the CDK is actually building the .NET 5 Docker image for us as part of the deploy command. And once that finishes, we'll see the URL for our new function. I'll grab that URL, use an invoke web request again, and there's our 200 and hello from .NET 5 response. Before we wrap up for today, I want to do one more thing to help highlight the benefits of this technology. So far, we have three functions in US West 2, but let's say we also want to deploy our infrastructure in Europe. So let's do just that. Let's deploy foo, bar, and the .NET 5 Lambda to London. To start, I'm going to run AWS configure set region EU West 2 and that will have my session default to deploying to London. Now, I've never used a CDK in this region before, so I do need to run CDK Bootstrap before I do anything else. Now, a quick CDK deploy command, but this time I'm going to show you a little trick. I'm going to use the require-approval flag with the value never, and this way I won't get prompted to approve IAM changes. And with that, now we're in EUS2. And just to confirm, I'll send a request to our foo endpoint. And there's our 200. That concludes this video on how to define your serverless infrastructure's code using C Sharp and then deploy to Amazon Web Services using the CDK. If you'd like more information, I highly recommend the CDK Workshop for additional tutorials. General documentation is available on the AWS Docs site. And if you find any bugs or want to explore the source code, Come find us on GitHub. Thanks for watching.